That's quite a few of them. Obviously, I don't normally keep them down here. I'm just I brought them around here to show you guys. Westinghouse. They make they made jet engines. Yeah, I've got a lot. Of, actually, you will find a lot of interesting history on uh, a lot of these. That one right there, uh, I can tell you a lot about each of them. Um, this one they call the Darth Vader fan. Now this fan was made much before Darth Vader, but if you look at the back of it, all these fans have kind of a nickname. See how the back of it kind of looks like Darth Vader's mask? Okay. You see? Yeah, it's the only thing it has the cloth cord. Yeah, all these pretty much. Well, so here's what I'll show you. These ones over here are pretty much after World War uh, One. Okay. And then everything over there is uh, is pre-World War One. Wow. These are all heaters here. These are antique heaters I collect. Now I collect and restore all of these, uh, so pretty much all the ones you've seen here, they're, you know, mm -hmm. I've restored them all. Uh, I'll plug some of them in and show you some stuff. Uh, I've got some, i got a pretty couple cool ceiling fans downstairs, some antique ones. Um, they're taken apart right now, but I mean, they're mostly together, I'll show you. Uh, I should show you the oscillators on, on some of these, and you know, if you want to plug a few of these in, I'll show you how they work. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are brass blades and brass cages. So they used to drive around and collect these up, and they used them for making, uh, you know, munition shells and stuff. Okay. So whenever they, they did the war effort, a lot they of these smelted, they, smelted, they smelted them down and made made shell casings. Right. So a lot of these got scrapped, you know, because they they, they needed them for the war. So there's not a lot of them to exist. Now, are these like the ones here? Are these pre World War One or like from that era? Yeah. Most of these are you know. What is it taking the parts of these? Tom Spear. Here, you want me to plug one of these in and you can see this one, the cord's about to go on it, so let me plug it in here. Like this one, I gotta put a new cord on. This is the original cord. Uh, it's pretty frayed right there. But here, check out the oscillator. Uh, so these are all made out of cast iron. Uh, like modern stuff now is made out of brass. Here, let me turn it on and you can watch. This one's got a pretty cool oscillator. All these work, and a lot of these are still the original paint. Now see how it is back here? It's got a wheel. There's a whole transmission inside of here. And it has a, you know, a link right here that goes mm -hmm. to another link that goes down through the shaft, that goes to this one, goes to that yeah. one. I've got yeah. some really cool oscillators that are taken apart at the moment, but I got some videos I can show you of them. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, I don't have a YouTube channel. I actually, I have one of them posted on YouTube. Um, I only have one video or two videos up there. But these are, I mean, most of these are pretty expensive. I mean, a lot of these fans are, you know, worth over a thousand bucks. You know, but, uh, you yeah, know, you can just tell from the weight of some of them. Here, check this one out, too. I'll show you this one. Okay. This one is, um, this one is called a GE Kidney Fan. GE Kidney? Yeah, because this box on the back, the transmission box, looks like, kind of like a kidney. That's oh. the shape of, like, a, you know, what a human kidney looks like. Yeah. And this one's kind of neat because you've seen you've seen like a gyro. Mm -hmm. yeah. This thing kind of looks like what a gyro looks like. I'm gonna make a little room so you can kind of see this one. Now, one of these are the original paint. You want to turn it on? Go for it. Yeah. Maybe a little further to go. So yeah, there's a switch right here, and this engages and disengages it. Now, when you go, if you go to that, you know, the museum you guys were looking at going to, this is mainly the kind of stuff they've got there. All these brass and cast iron fans. What's cool about this one is, is check this out. It goes like this, yeah. and see how this thing can tilt inside you of that. You don't cut yourself. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You got to keep your fingers. I've got them in there a couple times. It's no fun. Yeah, but see how it has like a ring, and then inside of another ring. Yeah. Um, and then it has, you know transmission that comes out of here. Uh, some of these have some pretty cool, they have centrifugal switches. So like when early fan motors, when they were first built, they didn't have the kind of technology they have now. Here, I'll plug one of these in, I'll show you. They call these the Westinghouse tank motors. Um, now where'd you get these fans? Um, from other collectors and stuff. Sometimes fan shows, like you know like, when you guys were looking at going to the museum, uh -huh. they're having a trade show there. Guys like that, you know, we trade them and stuff. These are uh, 1905 and a 1906 Westinghouse. Uh, they call them the Westinghouse tank motors. See, they have all these like ornate looking 
vent holes in the back. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, if you see the brass on these, see how the brass on these is real dull and aged? And then see how these are all shiny? Mm -hmm. You know, some yeah. of these are shiny. This, this is what you call patina. This is the original patina. So that means these have been not polished for over 100 years. You know, they got left. But here, watch. When I plug this one in, you'll see it makes some sparks, probably. You probably can see it better if you look through there. You probably can see it better if it was dark. But you'll hear it. Let's see. You'll probably hear it. Yeah, I see them. Yeah, I saw them. They make them sparks. And see how it clicks? Uh -huh. And then watch. Whenever I turn it off, you hear that same thing click again. Listen. You know, here, and this one will do the same thing. That's a starting mechanism. What it is, they have a, an extra winding in the motor that, uh -huh. that whenever it gets up to speed, it centrifugal force throws it out. Turn that. Oh, you know what? Hang on. It must be. There we go. Listen. See that shoots sparks out of there? Yep. Yeah. And you hear that thing clicks out? Yeah. And then whenever you turn it back off, that's. That's a, a little switch in there that as the thing spins up, it throws out and it disengages that start winding. You okay. can actually hear it clicking back in right there. Can I see the thing in the kitchen? What's in the kitchen? The same thing in the kitchen? Yeah. I've got some, some downstairs I'll show you too. One thing I want to ask you is like for a core line, something like this, you get, you get parts, parts like this, mm -hmm. and yeah, you want to keep it as original as possible. Right. Now most of these, like for instance, this one's been repainted. Yeah, but most of these other ones are all the original paint. There's a couple that have been repainted, you know, but a lot of these, like those two over there are all original. Those two have never been repainted or never been polished. Um, this one right here, come on, check this one out. This one they call a skeletal motor. Uh, this one, there's only four of these that exist. Wow. Here, let me plug it in and I'll, I'll uh, here, here you go. This one's got a pretty cool motor. Here, let me unwind this and I'll show you what the, what the, now this one's been repainted, but this is 16 inch fan, so it's a little bigger, but there's only, there's about 12 of the 12 inch fans and there's only four of these that exist. Who made these fans? This is a Century. So you know Century made a lot of ceiling fans too. Yeah. This one has a centrifugal switch too, if you see that thing in there, and you'll actually hear it when I turn it on. Listen. Wow. See how it snaps like that? That's the switch opening up. And these ones are really cool because how open the motor is. It has these huge open, you know, vent holes. Yeah. That was for cooling. Uh, you know, there's vent holes in there for the air to pass through. Like, can I, can you see the fan in the kitchen? Like, can you turn the kitchen fan on? Turn it on, sure. Yeah, yeah. let's go down there. All right. Is that yeah. Huntington Bay Huntington? Have you ever looked at any of these online, any fans like these? Yes, I do. Yeah, have you ever been on the Antique Fan Collector's website? Yeah. The AFCA's website? I want to be an Antique Fan Collector. Yeah? Yeah. Well, if it's all right with your dad, maybe I can give you one of these. I've got one over here that you might be interested in having. I'll show you. It's a Western. So here, let him check out this one in here first. What kind of fan is that? You know, I don't even remember what kind this is. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, pull the chain right here. I, reach. I think it's the shorter one. Oh, no, there you go, smaller one. I don't even remember what kind this is. This one's been here for a long time, as you can see. That's uh, pretty cool. It's got wicker blades. Yeah. Um, and I've got, well, here, I'll show you. I got the blades for the ones downstairs. Here's, I'll show you one downstairs. Here's the blades for it. For a, uh, Why how blanky over that? Well, because I don't want them to get scratched up. Because these are original. These are all when they used to make them out of real wood. Wow. It's real wood. And then what I like is everything nowadays is made out of uh, made out of stamped steel. This is back when they used to make everything out of cast iron. So even these brackets here are made out of cast iron. Okay. And I've got the wow. fan downstairs. I'll show it to you. The fan downstairs is really cool. Oh my god, I can't you wait to see, see it. that first? Yeah. Now, you can come up here, I'll show you some more stuff. This is where my workshop is down here. Hey. And the fans you see up there, that's only a small portion of what I've got. I mean, you look around on the yeah. shelf. Here, go this way. Well, you know, you can go there. I'll show you. This isn't a ceiling fan, but this is a ventilator right here. Okay. Right here. Wow. So it's kind of like a ceiling fan. I think it's, it's enclosed. 12 blade, yeah. And, mm. and let me turn on the light. Um, you can still see it's still got the original lettering 
the St. Louis Emerson on there. It's kind of hard to read, but I'm going to mount that one in the front window of the house next summer. Okay. Wow. And it'll draw all the air down and out. Um, my workshop's in here. Do you want to see in here? Ash room. Yeah. This is the door. I do remodeling for a living, and I took this out of a house, and I just thought the stickers my friends thought was kind of funny. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Um, wow. Well, here, I'll show you. This is one of my favorite fans. Let me bring it over here. I'll put it on the workbench. This is a, a really cool... It's all cast iron, so it weighs a ton. This is a century, and you'll see how ornate it is. Here, let me bring it over here. I can even hook it up and run it for you. Can you do that? Hook it up? Yeah, I'll hook it up. This sucker weighs a ton. Can you put the blades on it? Well, those are the blades from the one upstairs. Oh, I, I probably could, but a little dusty. Well, let me tell you what's cool about this one. Come you on. know how on most ceiling fans, the motor stays stationary, and then the, the center parts where the blades connect is what spin? When this one runs, uh, here, let me help when this one runs, the whole, the whole motor spins. Oh. So instead of the motor staying still and the rest of it spinning, so the blades go on right here, and the motor actually is what spins. And you can see these really castings. Here, get a, grab that and try to lift it up. You've probably watched the fan before. Ow! It's oh. heavy, right? <laughs> Let me see if I <laughs> give it a feel how heavy that sucker is. Oh yeah, it's heavy. It's got some yeah, the reason yeah, because like this reminds me of like like uh, I like got an airplane when airplanes have rotary engines. Mm -hmm. This is this is where the whole where the power's bolted to the this piece here, and the whole thing turns, and the crankshaft is stationary. There's a whole, this whole, whole cylinder block rotates. Yeah, it's pretty cool design. You want me to run it? Yes. Yeah, I'll get a cord over here. I got a lot of cool things that you might be interested in. That, uh, you know, depending on how long you can stay, I'll show you. I yeah. also collect antique motors too. Uh, these are all like hundred-year-old motors, and I put different kinds of polishers on them, and I run them whenever I restore my uh, fans. These are what I use to, you know, polish the blades and. Polish out the paint and clean up the metal parts, you know. And you can see hanging up above you, these are all the cages for ones I've got taken apart. Um, here, let me let me get a look at this uh, first. Let me get here. Obviously, I don't have this one done, so I have to, I have a ton of stuff in this cabinet here too. Fans that I'm restoring right now. I can show you some of them. Let me let me hook this one up. I gotta find the wires in the bottom of it. We need to hook to. There we go. Wow. This is essentially what he did over there, but I have a an alligator clip version of it. It goes as a while. This one's pretty cool. Because, like I said, what I really like about this one is the way that the um, the whole motor spins. You know, I've never seen a fan like this. This fan's over 100 years old. How do you turn it on? Oh, I'm just gonna plug it in. Here, why don't you do the honor, Jeff? Okay. Plug that in for me. Let me make oh, sure nothing's see. touching over here. Have him stand back so he doesn't get hurt. Go ahead. I just want to hold on it while it starts. It's got a lot of torque. There we go. See how the whole motor spins? So whenever yeah. this thing runs, this part stays still, and the switch goes right here. I've got the switch over there, and the blades attach onto this. Wow. And so that one, it's pretty cool. All right, you can unplug it. I want it to spin down. Yeah, so the, like I said, most fans, you know, the actual motor stays still, and the rest of it, and this is the top of it. This is the canopy that goes on top. Yeah, I've got wow. a couple other parts for it over here. This is the switch. This goes down at the bottom. So when you reach on the bottom of the fan, you, know, you click this, it's got a snap switch. So instead of like a pull chain, it's got a snap. And these are the contacts. It's kind of cool. Oh, wow, cool. See how that thing snaps? Who made the fan? Philip Deal? This one? That's a Century. Century? Yeah, so you can see that if you look at the motor tag on it right here. See, that's a Century Electric. Century Electric. Yeah. Yeah, because Philip Deal made the four swing fans. Well, you know what? I happen to have. Oh, you know, I have some Deal. Um, I've got some. I took them upstairs. I do have some Deal uh, desk fans. Can you go upstairs and see the upstairs? How about uh, How about a Robbins and Myers? Here's another ceiling fan. This one is taken apart at the moment, but I'll bring it over there and you can take a look at it. This, uh, you've heard of Robbins and Myers, right? Yeah. This is a Robbins and Myers ceiling fan. It's all stripped apart right now. This one's much lighter, but see, this is one where the, the motor stays still mm -hmm. and the rotor actually is what spins. So this is vice versa. The the motor actually spins and the rotor stays still. This is the opposite. Uh, and I have the blades for that up here too. I think let me see. I'll grab one of them. This is a much smaller. You can see how tiny these are compared to. Wow. And the same thing. These are all real wood yeah. and uh, cast iron blade brackets. 
So instead of being, you know, stamped steel, you know, the way they stamp steel, you've seen, they take a piece of sheet metal, right, they have a huge just... press that just stamps it out. These are actually, they have to pour these molten metal, you know. Um, I'll show you, you know what, I've got some other things right here that are, uh, these are a bunch of my, my projects right here. Wow. Uh, each one of these drawers is a fan that I'm restoring. This is a, a 1905 uh, General Electric. This is the original paint and everything. This is actually, believe it or not, that's the original paint. Whoa, it's black. Yeah, original paint. This is a uh, Emerson. Here's the rest of it, yeah. the motor. I mean, it's smooth, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it is here. I polish those out on uh, on those polishers right there. Uh -huh. When I get these, they're extremely rough. Here's the motors. Well, here, I'll show you some more. I got some, all these drawers are full of projects. So this is, this one is the one I'd like to show you the video online I've got. This is a Westinghouse double lever oscillator, oh. and it, it looks really cool. It's got all kinds of gears and cranks as it move. And these are the stators, you know, these are basically what make that thing run. Wow. I take these out and I rebuild these. Why do you smell so bad? What's that? Why do the company smell so bad? What, uh, these smell bad? Yeah. Well, oh, this is an old filing cabinet. That's right. They're 100 years old, they probably got a lot of, you know, Age on them. Look where this one's in Canton, Ohio. Yeah, this antique filing cabinet too. I collect all kinds of antiques. Wow. See, these are more of them. These are ones oh, wow. I haven't got to work on yet. Yeah, this is another. This is a Century desk fan right here that I'm restoring. And then this one down here is the oldest fan that I've got to dig in. This is an 1899. 1899. Yeah, this is 1899 General Electric. They call it a pancake fan. Because they have these huge, big, flat motors. I've got one upstairs. I'll show you, but uh, that's the oldest one I've got yet. And this is what yeah. the stator looks like. Is to it that. that the only one prior to 1900? The only one prior to 1900 that I've got. Okay. Because they get to be really, really valuable. Because mm -hmm. they didn't really start making them until the late 1800s, anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are like the first.